Nothing to see here, just a man driving in the surf. Got to the airport and decided that he should go to the bar and have a drink, which led to like another drink, which led to another drink, which led to him passing out at the bar and missing his flight. I thought this was going to be a sweet story. It is. It gets there. It gets there. It gets there. Yeah, it's a real meat cute. So he wakes up and he's like, oh my God, I missed my flight. I'm going to get fired. Like, this is the worst. So he goes and he's like, I'll take any airline, anything. And it was a little tiny airline called Muse Air, which doesn't even exist anymore. And he gets on the plane and he's like a bigger guy and he, they put him in like a middle seat and he's just like, starts to get kind of claustrophobic and he stands up and he goes, I'm so sorry. Sorry, is, I, I can't sit in the middle. Is there anyone around me who would be willing to switch seats? Please, like, I'll buy you a drink on the flight. And the person right next to my mom was like, yeah, I'll, I'll switch seats with you. So then he ended up sitting next to my mom. And then, and then so they end up spending the entire flight just talking. And, you know, I mean, there's just chemistry. You know, they really hit it off, you know, the whole thing. And then at the end of the flight, my dad looks over at the guy who's sleeping in the seat next to my mom, and he goes, is that your boyfriend? And she looks at him, she goes, Nope. Not and then that's how, yeah, and then, uh, and then they were engaged 11 days later or but something she, like that. But he really was. It was her boyfriend, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you we had, a, we, had a, we had a meeting and it was it was fantastic. He was in LA and he said, I want you to come and I want you to come to my place and we'll have uh, we'll sit and we'll talk. And I said, Great, I love I love your work. I'd love I'd love to. So we went and we sat and it turned into like a four hour meeting where we talked about movies and we talked about literature and we talked about art and we talked about philosophy, we talked about food, we talked about just they, they everything. Were, I remember there were also like silences in, in complete comfort. Yeah, 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 yeah. There would be times where no one said anything. We just kinda of sat and then we just kinda of, uh -huh. <laughs> and it was, it was amazing. And I walked out of there and like a typical actor, I was just like, I fucking nailed that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and then I didn't hear anything from Luca for six and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he called one day and he's like, I've got a new movie. And I was like, I'm in. <laughs> What would you make for good spies? Are you good liars? Are you could could you could you pull it pull well, it off? Actors, so I, hopefully we're, we're pretty convinced. Terrible spy, <laughs> probably. Um, I don't know. I reckon. Yeah, I, th I think real life spies are not like we see in the movies. I think if there's an international incident and the Queen is forced to call Henry and Obama is forced to call me, then we are already so fucked because yeah. there are so many people above us who could do the job so much better. Yep. What was that thing that we saw? Oh, uh, I did, uh, it was, uh, it's called like fascia scraping. It's just like a very painful version of a massage. Get rid of the hair? No, 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 it's not for the hair. I would never shave my chest hair. I'm like Samson. If I shave my chest hair, I'm She's powerless. Yeah. So you get the phone call from the casting person. Yeah, and, uh, and, I, and I said, okay, I'd love to read the script. And I read the script and, uh, and I recognized that it was amazing. And I recognized that it was complex and, and mm -hmm. interesting. And, uh, but at the same time, I didn't quite understand sort of the nature of their relationship. So I, I was like, you know what? I can't go in and audition for something if uh. I don't really understand it because I don't want to look like a chump for Clint Eastwood. Right. Like I, I only want to go in if I know I can do a good job. And I was like, I don't think I can do a good job on this. Hmm. And my agent was like, are you out of your damn mind? What are you talking about? Get in there and do this. By the way, there was definitely elements of that where he said, okay, now look at this look that she gives in this one frame. I've never seen anyone be able to do this before. This is the most beautiful thing. And that's what I want you to do on this scene. And I go, wait, that? And he's like, not like that. No, she did that. You have to do your own version. And you go, I don't know what that means. How do I apply that? You but know? just as good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just better. as good. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on, I'm sure, on uh, Mirror Mirror. Yeah. It'll yeah. distract oh. you. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, someone was like, well, what's it like? And I was like, well, it would be like if you took Snow White and made her eat like a pound of mushrooms. It's kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now you're gonna set maybe some dance moves. <laughs> By the way, this is the truth should they the dance the two of them? <laughs> Timmy is the best dancer in this room. I guarantee. Fucking. <laughs> Thing you and the cast were able to do to to when you weren't on set to kind of lighten it up a little bit. Oh, I. Uh, Funny story, I actually bought a pig from one of the extras. Uh, they, they showed up with... That'll lighten it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this, guy, this, this guy is supposed to bring a pig, and he brings his hog, and it's enormous. I mean, it's like, tw it's like almost as tall as I am. Like it's in, in, and Nate looks at it and goes, this makes me really nervous. If we let this thing off of its leash, it's, if it runs wild, we're not going to be able to get this thing. And also, it's bigger than pigs were back then. And the guy was like, oh, man, I don't even really want this pig. I was just bringing it for this. Like, I guess I got to drive it all the way home now. <laughs> and I was like, so wait, would you sell it? And he goes, well, how much? And I go, I don't know, how much do you want for it? And he goes, 
150 bucks. I was like, dude, here's 300 bucks. Thanks, thanks for the pig. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we had it for a little bit, and then I cooked it for the whole crew, and we had a big barbecue. Oh. Yeah. I know. You know. Parents, because they didn't approve of it. They, mm -hmm. you know, they said, you're throwing your life away. Mm -hmm. And once I was able to prove that this isn't because I want to be lazy and sit around right. and just watch movies all day, this is because this is what I'm passionate about and this is what I love to do, that's when it started to be, you know, more of a novelty, like, this is Victor, our businessman's son. This is our crazy son, Army. He's an actor. Can you believe it? You know? You keep the little I kept everything. Did yeah, you really? I kept everything. That's, that's my, that's my go-to move. On the last day of set, I put on as much of the costumes as I can and I just walk off set. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you do it's it. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Right. But you and, and Timmy Chalamet did not know each other. No. We met in Crema. We'd never met before. We'd never spoken on the phone. we never exchanged emails. Nothing. So there was really kind of a ambiguity to it of like, am I going to know this guy? Am I going to like this guy? Are we going to be able to do this? But but well, those two don't know each other either, so maybe right, that really right. works, you know? They're yeah. just basically meeting each other and doing that. Yeah, and Luca's sort of whole rationale for it was, if I love you and I love him and I think that you guys are both great, then you'll like each other, no problem. And fortunately it worked. I'm sure there's been instances where that hasn't worked, but uh, lucky enough for Timmy and I, it worked. Yeah, what are you talking about? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You might like this guy. Yeah, I, I, think we should do, I think we should do a rehearsal. I hate rehearsing. Oh, boy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I had a, uh, I had a, uh, I had an audition recently, and I'm not going to say who, but I went in for a director, and I was so excited. I mean, so excited. I'd been working on this like for like five days, like nonstop. Like as soon as I got it, I was like, okay, nobody bothered me. Like I'm gonna, I, this is, this has to take priority, and I just work, 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 and then I go in, and I get there, and. Uh, and I sit down and they're like, okay, the, uh, they'll be here in a, in a minute and all that. And I was like, okay, cool. And like 20 minutes goes by, 30 minutes goes by, 40 minutes go by. And I'm like, oh man, okay, don't let this, don't let this bother you. Like, don't let it take you out. Like, you're here to do your job. Like, that's fine. Okay, we're going to do this. Let's go. And then in comes, sit down. How you doing? Yeah, good to see you. Okay, let, let, let's do this. Let's do the first scene. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. Let's do the second scene. Blah, 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 blah. Great. Okay, let's do that third scene. Blah, 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 blah. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate it. And I was like. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you know? it, so it start, the bet has morphed for the audience. Don't make bets with Sicilians. <laughs> Just don't. It started out because I was really confident and he was also equally confident that the bet started out if Donald Trump loses, which was my stance, because I was an optimist. If Donald Trump loses, don't clap, he won. <laughs> if Donald Trump loses, I get to pick any restaurant anywhere in the world, and he has to fly me there first class, <laughs> put me up for a weekend, meet me there, and treat me to a meal of any <laughs> restaurant of my choosing. And the flip side of that was he got to pick any restaurant anywhere in the world, and... Kyoto, Japan. I Donald the, Trump I the one. Imperial Villa of, yeah. the, of the Japan uh, royal family. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> what are we gonna uh, say? What do you wanna say? Because I you're the one that said we should, should do this. You just said. Why is it my responsibility? Shut up, shut up. You're, shut the, you're the one supposed to say something. Sorry about that. It happens with Inkelvosses all the time. I know. It's Good morning, everybody. Oh, yeah, you're a morning person. Yeah, yeah. sometimes, yeah. sometimes. <laughs> you, I hear you have a morning ritual, so did you stick yeah, with yeah. that? Yeah, uh, I like to take a morning ritual of a nice shower. It's part morning ritual, part just hygiene, but yeah. <laughs> like <a> nice... <laughs> no, this was, uh, this was after Social Network. This was a little while after Social Network. Uh, long enough after Social Network that I was kind of like, I probably should have a job soon, or this is going to get bad. I'd like to Guys, start by asking, <laughs> how did you get your SAG card? Uh, I was Taft Hartley in on a movie that was a small independent movie uh, and they needed a waiter to come over and I think it was, who was in it, Kip Perdue was in it, I don't even remember what it was called, I think it was called Laura Smiles or Laura's Smile, something like that. Uh, and I played a waiter and I came up and I wasn't supposed to have any lines and I was supposed to be thinking and the director was like, you gotta say something. And I was like, uh, 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 
you guys want anything? And they were like, yeah, fine, okay, good. And then that was it. Wow. And, and then they realized, because it was such a small production, uh, they were like, oh wait, do you have a SAG card? And I was like, no. And they were like, oh no. And they kind of had to <laughs> scramble to, sorry, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell that story, <laughs> but yeah, that's how I got my SAG card. Did you like editing? Did you like? No, being, dude, oh. in sixth grade, I made the movie The Communicator. <laughs> okay. You're getting was, younger and younger. I know, I'm just I'm like, it's all coming back to me. Uh, okay. Robert Moore directed this movie that he and I worked on, uh, you know, uh, together, uh, and it was called The Communicator, and it was about, like, this cell phone that looked like a cell phone, but it could actually blow up the world if, like, you put in the right thing to it. You could still sell that. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Uh, wait a second, don't take that. I remember the first time we had a wardrobe fitting, I put on a pair of the shorts, and I was like, where's the rest of them? <laughs> Uh, and it's hard when you've got a casting director who, you know, some of them are great. I mean, some of them really care. A lot of them really care. And then some of them get busy. Some of them maybe have had a stressful day and they're just like this. And they're like, well, but why do you say that? <laughs> just like, why am I here? I don't know. And it, 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 can break, it, can, it can be crushing. I don't know. I think the best thing about auditioning is to just keep doing it. I mean, I probably have done thousands of them and I'm sure thousands of them were terrible. And uh, Timothy, you mentioned dancing in uh, Bigger Splash, and there is a somewhat notable dance scene in this movie as well. <laughs> Army. <laughs> Did you expect it to be as kind of notable of a scene as it turned out to be? No. <laughs> First of all, let me explain. <laughs> if you're doing a dance scene in a movie, there's no music. You are dancing to complete silence, except maybe like a click track so you can keep rhythm. So I'm six foot five, I'm on a dance floor. I immediately assume that I'm the lanky guy that everyone's like, oh, who's the really tall guy flailing over there? And then all of a sudden there's no music and you know, you're know you sober because you're working. I don't know about a lot of people, but I've never really been sober and thought, oh, now's the perfect time to dance. So. All of these things combined with the fact that there's now a crew staring at you, watching you, and the focus puller is going, dude, it's 4 a.m., we've been here for seven hours, can we just get this over with? And you're like, trust me, I want this to end as badly as you do. I remember when I was a kid, I, I would grab like a video camera, like a little home camera, and like mm -hmm. put it on a tripod and be like, okay, Victor, my brother, Victor, you're this kind of guy, okay, and you're this, and Jonathan, <laughs> you're this kind of guy, and I'm this kind of guy. Okay, ready? You guys go, and then I'm gonna come in later, and then we're gonna do this thing. Okay, ready, go. And of course, we would end up doing like an improv scene that would last like an hour and a half, and by the end of it, they'd be like, can we go now? And I'm like, you're ruining the scene! You know, it's like that kind of thing, but it was just always what I loved, you know? So can you remember the first movie you made? Uh, the only thing my school was offering at the time was a musical, so I just did it. I, I think it's fine, but you must sing to your kids. I do, I do. Give yeah, me yeah. something of that, then. Let's make it sweet, then. Uh, when I'm bouncing my son around, yes, and I'm trying yes. to get him to sleep, uh, <laughs> oh my God, don't make me do this. Come on. Uh, I, just, I just like ramble, so I, I kind of start with, I'm like, who's my little buddy, my sweet little buddy? We love you more than any other thing, except your sister. We love you both equally. You're my little buddy, my sweet little, and it just goes on and I on. I love on. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's award caliber. You yeah. should be, the next thing will be a musical. Now right? I'm you actually just, sweating. But, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, what kind of things do you find attractive in a mate? Uh, she has to be five, nine and a half, brunette, uh, from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, grew up in Northern California and Colorado. Very specific. Yeah. I have a very specific, uh, perfect mate. So just, are you seeing someone? Yeah, or? my wife, Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. <Hi. laughs> yeah. That's cool. So it's serious? It's, it has, yeah, it's pretty serious. That afternoon after meeting him, we were riding bikes around the town and he was going, that's the coffee shop you want to go to and they make really good gelato there and that place has really good pasta and oh, great pizza over there. So our relationship kind of unfurled itself really analogously to the film. So we were just afforded all this time to spend with each other. And then everything else in the movie played out too in real life. Yeah. <laughs> we really went for it. You uh, have had a busy year. We've been basically doing this since Sundance. Yeah. <laughs> in January. I, I just did the math outside. I think we've spent four and a quarter times as much promoting the movie as we actually spent shooting it. <laughs> Not looking straight in front of you, yeah. Wow! <laughs>